Please turn with me to your Bibles right now to Isaiah 26 and verse 3. I'm going to leave, read from New Living Translation. It's Newly Living Translation, okay? Just, just given birth. That's why it's called New, okay? You will keep, you will keep in perfect peace. Everybody say perfect peace. Perfect peace, or, uh, peace all who trust in you. The perfect peace here is a peace that's unbroken, a peace that's not disturbed. It's shalom peace. It is like a third John 2, my beloved, that you may prosper in all things, be in good health, even as your soul prosper. That is God's will. That's God's purpose. That's God's destiny for each one of us who trust in you. All whose thoughts, everybody say thoughts. Dalambasa, Malaysia, Fikiran, thoughts. Minda, Minda, thoughts. Thoughts means your meditation. Thought means your mind. Thoughts, thought means your thinking uh, are fixed on you. Say fixed on you. Not a shifting shadow, but fixed. Say fixed, anchored. I entitle this short message, uh, Fixing Our Eyes on Jesus. Fixing Our Eyes on Jesus. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? And Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, again, a new, new living translation. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your side. Look at that. Set your mind. Set your fikiran. Bukan pendapat. Pendapat, right? No. Fikiran. Okay? Uh, fix your side. Fix your mind. Fix your meditation on the realities of heaven. Everybody said reality of heaven. We got no choice in this pandemic. We cannot be earthly minded. Everything on the earth has been uh, scraped out. We have to become eternal minded. Where Christ sits in the place of honor at the right hand of God. Isn't that wonderful? Set your mind. What is the purpose of this message? In this season, I said a new day is dawning. In a new day's dawning, we have been preaching on Jesus. We have been preaching on Jesus. The purpose of this message is to fix our eyes on Jesus as our great shepherd. Good shepherd. Everybody say great shepherd. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse, verse 4 says, when the uh, chief shepherd comes, he will reward you with the crown of glory which cannot be faded. Come on, somebody say amen, please. I am just the under shepherd. I'm not the undertaker. I'm the under shepherd. But Jesus is the chief shepherd. Jesus is the great shepherd. Jesus is the motak thing shepherd. Okay? A shepherd that has got no weakness whatsoever. Come on. Today, we're going to just focus a little bit on fixing our eyes on Jesus as our shepherd. You know, friends, I searched the Bible. I read the Bible. You know, the shepherd's love is, is total. Everybody said total. If you want to read about this shepherd's love, you should read 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 through 11. 7 through 11. You know, a shepherd's love is a pastoral love. A shepherd's love is a father's love. A shepherd's love is a mother's love. A shepherd's love is a nursing love. A shepherd's love is an everlasting love. Come on, somebody show amen, please. I'd like to turn your attention this evening to John chapter 10. We're going to read verse 11, verse 27 and 28. And then we're going to zero in to verse 27. John, the 10th chapter, verse 11, verse 27 and 28, again living from, reading from New Living Translation. I am the good shepherd. Huh? Sarah, I'm the good shepherd, Jesus said. I'm not just a shepherd, you know. I'm a good shepherd. Wow. You see, he introduced himself 
as good. Nobody is good except God. Come on, somebody say amen, please. Is that wonderful? That's why we sing this chorus, God, you are good. Isn't that wonderful? Come on. Every other goodness that comes from man has got wudang sabale batu. Okay? But Jesus' love is so awesome. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrificed, not the ship, sacrificed his life for the ship. Bad shepherds sacrifice the sheep for themselves. Okay? It goes on to say, my sheep, well, I like the verse 27. If there is a, there is a flushing scripture in John 10, is John 10, the 27th verse. My sheep, listen to my voice. It doesn't say, my sheep will listen. Huh. Bukan, my sheep, listen to my voice. Huh. So natural. It goes on to say, my sheep, listen to my voice. I know them. They follow me. I'll give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. Praise God. Is that wonderful? Come on. Is that wonderful? You know, uh, I'm going to read Psalms 23 later. But uh, the, I'm, I'm going to just begin from verse 27. And I'm going to show you <clears throat> this evening... Three, dynamic, say dynamic, say awesome, that's right, say awesome at home, okay, whoever is watching at home, my ship, sorry, um, three dynamic, awesome marks of a good shepherd, Jesus said, I'm a good shepherd, that will greatly influence your life during this difficult time. This pandemic. Are you here with me? Come on. Can somebody say amen, please? Three dynamic, explosive, awesome, miraculous mark of a true shepherd. And I pray this will become relevant to you. Somebody say relevant. Come on, say relevant. And all these three marks are taken from John the 10th chapter, verse 27. If you're watching this service... And you don't know uh, God personally. This is for you. Praise God. You know, friends, uh, I'm going to take all these three sections from John 10, 27. My ship, listen to my voice. My ship, listen to my voice. Everybody say, listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Wow. I pick up the first point. The first point is, as a good shepherd, he desires, say desires, he desires to speak to us at all time. My ship, listen to my voice. God just does not speak to us when we're in trouble. God doesn't just speak to us when we're in calamity. God doesn't speak to us when we're in emergency. But God wants to speak to us Day by day, hour by hour. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. That's God's perfect will for the church in these last days. The Bible tells us in Hebrew, the third chapter was 7 and 8. Um, that is why the Holy Spirit says, Today, when you hear His voice, don't harden your hearts as an Israel did when they rebelled. When they tested me in the wilderness today, how can we harden our heart from hearing the voice of God? Very simple. We just want to hear what we want to hear. We don't want to hear what God wants to speak to us. That's why we are in so much of struggle because God's plan is a good plan. Come on, somebody say amen, please. In hearing the voice of God, Jesus again said in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, he repeats this seven times, the same conclusion to all the seven churches. And he says this, anyone with years to hear, some of our years are not to hear, some of our years are shut, okay? 
Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. Seven times Jesus said this. He who has a hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God has to say to the church in this last days. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Come on, somebody shout amen. Very quickly, the good shepherd wants to speak to us. Okay, how many of you want to hear the voice of God? Can somebody shout amen or ouch? You know? And I heard the voice of God, and I, and I was, you know, I was working and serving and wanting to grow up in the corporate ladder. And when God spoke to me, uh, that was a disaster. I had to get out and come. You must remember, as I said earlier, God's plan is the best plan. Come on, even though you don't want to agree with Him. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. You know, friends, how can we hear the voice of the Good Shepherd? Bagaimana boleh saya dengar suara uh, gembala saya? Gembala adalah Tuhan, right? How can I hear? You know, friends, the Psalms 115 verse 4 onward says, The gods of this world has got ears they cannot hear. Even if you put earring, they cannot hear. You know, the gods of this world has got eyes. No matter how thick your glasses are, they cannot see. Okay? They have got eyes they cannot see. They got mouth they cannot speak. No matter what you do with your what they with their vocal cord, they cannot speak. They've got hands cannot move. They got legs that cannot move. But verse three, Psalms one one five, verse three says, "Our God is in heaven and He does what He likes." The word does means what? We have to do everything for the gods of the world, right? At one time, Sarah was praying to all these idols. No, Sarah, no, you never prayed. She said, "Atheists, I think." You know, friends, you know what? Look at me, please. We have to do everything. But the God in heaven does. But our God is in heaven. He does what pleases to him. Glory to God. Are you here with me? We have a God who has got eyes, who can see, ears to hear, mouth to speak, hands to move. Therefore, the good shepherd wants to speak to us. Especially... Right now, many of us in our crossroad of prayer, crossroad of decisions, and job. Are you here with me? Come on, somebody shout amen, please. I want to share with you probably three things that will help you before I go any further. Number one, number one, do not put, do not put your trust in, the, in your ability to hear the voice of God. I repeat, do not put your trust in your ability to hear the voice of God, but put your trust in the ability of God to speak to you. How do you like that? How do you like that? Come on. For years, we have gone around this training, that training, pulling our ears here and there to hear the voice of God. That's our ability. Don't put your trust in your ability to hear the voice of God, but put your trust in the ability of God to speak to you. Come on. This is a paradigm shift in the way that God wants to speak to us. Come on. Somebody shout amen, please. Anyhow, God will speak to you. Anyhow. Say anyhow. Now look at Acts, the ninth chapter. How hardened the soul of Tarsus was. The soul of Tarsus. All right? So hardened, he was breathing murder. Every time he breathed, somebody's going to die. And thread, right? And he is so, he is so, so hardened. And still he can hear the voice of God. Come on, somebody say amen, please. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. What more? You are a child of God. And Romans 8, chapter verse 14 tells us, everyone has, everyone has the voice of God inside of us. Romans 8, 14 says, you have not received a spirit of bondage that you should fear. Now, 15, sorry, 15. 
For you have not received a spirit of bondage uh, that you should fear. But you have received a spirit of what? Adoption. Crying out. Say crying out. Crying out. Not silently. (laughs) Crying out. Abba. Father. That's the voice of God. Right inside of you. That's the voice that leads us to worship God. That's the voice that causes us to draw closer to Him in our intimacy. And that's the voice that will become instrumental in hearing the directive voice of God. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. If anybody tells me they don't have the voice of God, you have the voice of God inside. Come on, Abba, Father. It's not some handwriting, okay? It's a voice. Come on, say everybody say voice. Number two, very quickly, time is running after us. I don't know how much time I have. You know, number two, stay. Number two, if you want to hear the good shepherd's voice, stay in the attitude of expectancy. Like Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2. You know, Samuel said, Here, I am your servant. Speak, Lord. Expectancy. Everybody say expectancy. Come on. Those that don't, expect. Say expect. Hallelujah. Anytime. 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 He can speak to me when I'm having dinner. He can speak to me when I'm praying. He can speak to me when I'm upset. He can speak to me in any situation. I'm upset. God is not upset. I'm sleeping, but God is not sleeping. I'm busy, but God is not busy. I'm anxious, but God is not anxious. Come on, somebody say man, please. Expect God to speak to you. Glory to God. Come on. Are you here with me? Look at Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. I will climb up my watchtower. I have nothing to climb up. I'll climb up my watchtower and I'll stand at my guard post. There I'll wait. Wait. I'll wait to see what the Lord says and how He will answer my complaint. Come on, somebody say, man, please. I tell you, the most important factor in the voice, hearing the voice of God, is expectancy. Say, expectancy. Please don't box God's voice in the full wall of your definition. Now look at what the Hebrew tells us. Hebrew chapter 1 verse 1. Yeah, also reading from New Living Translation. Long ago. Everybody say long ago. Long ago in Bethlehem. No. Long ago God spoke many times. Say many times. The voice of God is not just one time. Okay. Very soon the church will have the glimpse of the building that we're going to submit And I've been praying, God, as to what to do. This is not the time to build. And the Lord said, son, take one step at a time. Get it drawn up, submit. I'll get it sorted out for you. And then I will provide. And then you will give me the glory. One step at a time. Okay? It says here, long ago, God spoke many times. Say many times. And in many ways. Many ways, if God wants to speak to you, when you walk into the sanctuary, God can speak to you through this Christmas tree too. Many ways. Say many ways. That's why He's omnipotent. He's omniscient, omnipresence. Come on. Somebody say man, please. Uh, ways to our ancestor through the prophet. Friends, listen to me. Listen to me. This is very important. How much time do I have? Come on. Somebody give me some time. Man. You know what, friends? Look at me. Sorry. All those at home. My timekeepers are all sleeping, I think. Okay. okay. Show me the board. I cannot see the board. Show me the glory. Show me your glory. Okay. Okay, right. Okay, thank you. Enough last. How long you understand that? Eh? Already seen. Okay. Papa Lama Kamumba Bradiri Sana. Machamata Kansaya. You know, friends, you know what? You know, um, the voice of God is not an option to the child of God. Pastor Boy, do you understand this? It's not an option. You don't hear the voice of God after 20 years being a Christian. No. The voice of God can be heard the day when you give your heart to Jesus because he's a good shepherd. That's why David said in Psalms 119 verse 105, Thy word is a lamp to my feet. Many of us still carrying the lamp. Not yet the light. 
That's why many of us are grouping in darkness. What switches on the light? You put your trust in the ability of God to speak to you. Number two, you expect God to speak to you. Come on. Somebody shout amen, please. Hallelujah. He's not a disappointer. He's not a frustrator. He will surely speak to you. Come on. Somebody shout amen, please. Your faith is a living faith. It's not dead. It's connected to the eyes, the ears, and the mouth, and the hand of God. Come on. Somebody say amen, please. Very quickly. Very quickly. Number three. How? How do I uh, hear the voice of God? Very simple. In this busy world, in this prayer, many of us pray a prayer of announcement, right? We pray this prayer. Oh God, I have just bought a house. Can you bless the house, Lord? Lord, this girl looks so beautiful. I am in love with them. Will you bless our relationship? Lord, I'm going overseas and I'm going to sign a business deal. Can you bless this? Bless that. Do this. Do that. Do it yourself. One day he's going to tell you. <laughs> DIY, <laughs> then you're in trouble. Many of our prayers are announcement. We inform God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to park the car there. I'm going to, you know, we talk to God. You know, it's just information. We never, number three, pray a prayer of inquiry. The prayer of inquiry. Everybody said the prayer of inquiry. When you pray the prayer of inquiry, God is, is committed to answer you. Glory to God. He's not like some people. When you ask them, they don't answer you. <laughs> Get very frustrated with them. Psalms 27 verse 4. David is asking God, why am I going through what I am going through? Don't you get it? Okay. He said this. In Psalms 27 verse 4, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord. And to what? Come on, read it in your house. Read it in the church. And to what? And ask of Him for instruction. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. I liked my wife in Bible school, but I was more fearful that I might marry, marry a devil in the ministry. So both of us, I mean, she's not a devil, of course. Both of us took one month to pray. Friends, if your marriage has got no problem, I want to sit at your feet. Can you disciple me, please? Now, if your rice cooker is automatic, your, your camera is instamatic, and uh, your flavors are aromatic, your marriage is problematic. We have problems, but thank God for His grace. Can somebody say amen, please? You know, friends, we prayed for one month, and I prayed this prayer. Oh, God, I like her very much. I like my wife very much. I like her smile. I like her mannerism. I like everything in her. And I like the way she, she trusts God. I said, God, this girl is, is wonderful. But she's not dynamic like me. But it doesn't matter. She can be a water horse, sea horse. I can be the fire horse. You know? Both cannot be sea horse. You know? Get drowned. Both cannot be fire horse. Get burned. Okay? So anyway, the Lord spoke to me. I inquired. I asked. And now we are living together 36 years with 3.6 million quarrels. And still the marriage is so intact. Everybody say intact. And when God speaks to you and tells you, Siawing, you have to marry a thousand. When you marry, jungle will become a sweet home, sweet home. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. David, in the valley of Rephidim, in 2 Samuel chapter 5, he has defeated Philistines so many times, but he went back. This is the habitual practice of David. He would go back to God and say, God, should I go down and defeat the Philistine? And God spoke to him and said, you go and defeat them. I'll give you breakthroughs like water. 
You know, friends, if he had gone on his own way, the Philistines would not have nullified completely. Are you here with me? So we need to, uh, we, in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 19, So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistine? Will you deliver them into my hands? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hands. Come on. Somebody say amen, please. You know, asking God doesn't mean weakness. Asking God doesn't mean capo. Asking God doesn't mean busybody. Asking God simply means a, a total dependence on God. It's like Psalms chapter 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with the, all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. What is the opposite of leaning not on your not understanding? Uh, uh, acknowledge Him in all your ways and He will direct your path. Do not be wise with your eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It will be healing to your bones and strength uh, uh, to, to your flesh. Come on, somebody say man, please. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, keep asking God. Keep asking God. If He doesn't speak to you today, if He doesn't speak to you tomorrow, one day He will speak to you. Keep asking. Keep knocking. Keep searching. The voice of God will surely come. And that girlfriend, if it's not of yours, if that boyfriend is not of yours, while they're asking, they will run away. It's okay. May one thing. Because that's not God's will. Come on, somebody say amen, please. Come on, somebody say amen, please. Isn't that wonderful? You know, friends, uh, number two, very quickly, in the next couple of minutes, number two, in, in um, sorry, John chapter 10, verse 27, it says here, he knows us, he says, and I know them, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them. Everybody say, know them. But he knows us. Come on, he knows us, not by, by, by face sake or superficially. He knows us intimately. Everybody say intimately. I know them. The Greek word for that word know is genesco. Genesco means an intimate, fruit-bearing, soul-tying relationship. He knows us intimately. Say intimately. That's why you don't need to be fearful that God will be oblivious to your problem. He knows everything that you're going through. He knows you heart to heart. He knows you emotions to emotions. He knows you feelings to feeling. He knows you from thought to thought. He knows you from conscience to conscience. He knows you from meditation to meditation. He knows you. Come on. That's why he's called a good shepherd. A shepherd who went to sacrifice the sheep to cook mutton curry. But a good shepherd takes keen interest in you. He loves you. He cares for you. He comforts you. Uh, it's like Psalms 139 verse 3. You comprehend my part. You comprehend my part. You comprehend my part. My, my lying down when I go to sleep. And you are acquainted with all my ways. Everything. Some of your stubborn ways. Some of your sweet ways. Some of your good ways. He's acquainted. He knows you in and out. That's why he is a good shepherd. I always say this to congregation. You may not recognize the presence of God. But the presence of God recognizes you. Come on. Somebody say amen, please. That's how intimate he is. That's why David said this. David said this in Psalms 23. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And uh, he restores, uh, leads me beside quiet waters that I'll not become so noisy. And he says, uh, 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 he restores my soul. Some of us are hurting in your soul. He restores my soul. Hurt by sin. Hurt by negative words. Hurt by people's intimidation. He restores my soul and leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Because I'm supposed to make him a champion. 
Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You are with me, your rod and their staff. They're not there to whack me, to criticize me, and to push me down, but they're there to comfort me. Glory to God. And you prepare a table for me. In this pandemic, you prepare a table for me. You know, in front of my enemy, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. You protect me. My cup runs over. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Come on. The scriptures are so backward on the screen. You know, I've already said there were six already. Come on. Who is Angeline? Is it Angeline? Um, Chris, who is that, Chris? Oh, Pali, okay. Ah. Nelly the Pali. You know what Pali means? Lizard. Only lizards can be found in the palace. So Nelly, you are found in the palace, okay? Praise God. Finally, I'm closing right now, and I'm done. Uh, musicians, can you come? And those who wanting our family at home, can you prepare your emblems? We're going to... Um, you know, self-communion. Number three, from the same scripture, it says, uh, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they will follow me. They will follow me. Friends, I tell you this. First of all, look at this. First of all, he enables us. Say enables us. He enables us uh, to, to hear his voice and he enables us by knowing us, then he gently causes us to follow him. Is that wonderful? That's a shepherd. You know why the sheep follow the shepherd? Good shepherd. You know why? Because they know this guy will not betray them. Because he has already empowered them. He has already known them. He has already nurtured them, nursed them, and they can trust Him. And I call this the before factor. Say before factor. Come on, before factor. Sing, use the mic, before factor. Before factor. That's right. The before factor is the one that will enable us and empower us to follow Jesus without a question. Have you questioned Jesus? No, never. Never. Why? Because of the before factor. You know what's the before factor? Our sins are forgiven while we were still sinners. Who will do that? Huh? Sarah, what did you do with your face, Sarah? You know, friends, He forgave our sin even before we acknowledge Him as Jesus. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Yet we were sinners. Jesus already died for us on the cross. And, that, and He already loved us even before we loved Him. 1 John chapter 4 verse 19. We love Him because He first loved us. Come on. Somebody say man, please. He called us and equipped us even before we serve Him. John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you that you should go forth and bear fruit and your fruit shall last through eternity. And whatever you ask my Father in my name, I'll give it to you. He blessed us even before we even came to know Jesus. Ephesians 1.3 We have been blessed with every spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. You know why? The good shepherd says they'll follow me. Number one, he enables them by hearing His voice. Number two, He empowers them by knowing them and giving them the confidence. I will not forsake you. You will not be lost in the highway and in the byway. The foxes will not come after you as long as I'm with you. My rod and my staff, they will comfort you and follow me. That's the last thing. And they will follow without a question. Glory to God. It is the same with us. Jesus, our good shepherd. Come on, church. We're going to prepare for communion. Say this together with me. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. And leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Because I'm a champion. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will not fear. I will not fear. For you are with me. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. comfort me. You anoint my head with, you, sorry, you prepare a table. You prepare a table for me before my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Anoint my head with oil. And my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I challenge you, if you are watching this message and you are so distant from God, you are watching this message and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, it's time that Jesus becomes your good shepherd. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus as our good shepherd.